Bird. In today's video, we're going over the basic parts of a pot still and how they function during a distillation. So let's go. So let's say we have a 12,000 liter still and we're using it to do a whiskey distillation. The first thing we want to do is to fill it with some of our wash. Wash is what we call our finished fermented liquid. So it has the alcohol that we're after. It's important to note that the liquid we're putting in the still already has alcohol. The still and the distillation process don't create any alcohol. What we're doing is concentrating the alcohol that's already present in the wash. Since this is a very big still, the wash will be pumped from the fermentation vessel into the pot of the still. Inside the pot will be a heating element, and it might look like a coil or a radiator inside the still. The wash will fill up the pot, go past the shoulder of the pot, which is the curved part, until it just reaches below the access door, or man door of the still. The man door is usually a very heavy circular shaped piece of metal that you can swing on top of the doorway, and you can tighten it by hand to close the vessel. Although there have definitely been times when I haven't properly tightened the man door and wash started frothing out of the still and started dripping onto the ground and burning onto the exterior of the still. That was a pain to clean. When the still is full and the man door is closed, we'll turn on the heat. As the wash is heated to a boil, we have the more volatile components of the wash rising up first. The wash is made up of many different components, some of them more volatile than others. What I mean by volatility is how readily a substance will change from a liquid form into a gas form. For instance, methanol has a boiling point of 64.7 degrees Celsius whereas ethanol boils at 78.37 degrees Celsius. So in this case, we can say that methanol is more volatile than ethanol since it will turn from a liquid to a gas at a lower temperature. We have these high volatility components in the wash rising up in gas form. They go up the still and depending on what type of still the distillery has, they may pass through a ball or onion shaped section. Each still shape will have a different degree of copper contact and reflux that will impact the overall character of the spirit. If you want to learn more about the influence of copper in distilling, I've linked that video above. If the still is onion shaped, when the heavier components reach this area, they won't be able to handle the sudden change in pressure and they'll fall back down into the wash. The higher volatility components will pass through and enter the head of the still. The head of the still will often have a sight glass in it. These are little windows in the still to allow the distiller to see straight through the still and to keep an eye on what's going on inside the still. The wash has dead yeast cells in it and dissolved carbon dioxide in it as it is a fermented liquid. When we're initially heating the wash up, it's prone to excessive foaming. If we didn't have the sight glass in the still, then what could happen is the wash could go up past the head and we might collect it in our distillate. This is called puking and results in solids and the wash ending up in our spirit, which we definitely do not want. At the start of the distillation, the distiller can look into the sight glass and turn down the heat when they see the wash frothing up in the sight glass. The gases move from the head and are funneled into the swan neck and into the line arm. The positioning of the line arm also plays a role in determining the character of the spirit. For instance, if the line arm is tilting downwards, then we'll collect more low volatility components, whereas if the line arm is tilted upwards, we'll collect more high volatility components. Let me explain. When something has low volatility, it has a higher boiling point. As the gas moves up higher and higher in the still, it's moving further away from the heat source, which was the heating coil in the pot of the still. The further away from the heat source we get, the colder it is. That means that when the low volatility gas gets to the line arm, the cooler temperature in that area will cause the gas to transform back into a liquid. So if the line arm is tilted downward, the liquid will naturally move down the line arm and be collected as part of the distillate. 
However, if the line arm is tilted upwards, then it's impossible for the newly condensed liquid to be collected as part of the distillate. Instead, it will fall back down into the pot of the still. An upward tilted line arm means we're favoring the collection of high volatility compounds in our distillate, since only gases can continue to move through the line arm and into the condenser. The condenser of a pot still is usually made up of a bundle of cooling tubes. There's cooling water running through the condenser, and when the gas reaches this section of the still, the sudden cold temperatures will cause the gas to transform back into a liquid. This spirit will travel down the condenser and offload all the heat it carries into the cooling water. The spirit will continue traveling down into a collection vessel. Now we talked about the main parts of a big pot still, but we can see a lot of these same parts in a smaller 2 liter still as well. Here you can see the pot, head, neck and line arm of a still. The condensing element here is instead a worm tub, which is a coil pipe that gradually gets smaller and smaller in diameter as it reaches the bottom. The worm tub is filled with cooling water and as the spirit travels through the pipe, it will offload all of its heat into the cooling water. The spirit will then be collected in a collection vessel. I hope you enjoyed looking at the basic parts of a pot still and how they function during a distillation. In the meantime, please support this channel by giving this video a thumbs up and hitting the subscribe button for more drinks, brewing and distilling videos. This is Brewbird, sending good vibes your way, I'll see you next time!